Hey everybody, welcome to Renegades Weekly. I am Zach Neubauer. You are Joe Vasil. Joe Vasil. Joe the Seal. <laughs> you know you're not. Am I the first one no, to ever say that? Not even close. Right. That was actually uh, a lot of people from Paramus called me that. Do you? Uh, did you ever watch Arrested Development? We're getting right into it. Yes. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, it's one okay. of my favorite shows. So Lucille? Seal. Yes. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, it's like yeah, Joe Vasil is like. Yeah. You could figure out a way to tie that in with Lucille. Yeah, no, definitely. Buster lost his hand to a loose <laughs> to a loose seal. seal. Yeah, <laughs> and the so there was actually a guy I worked with. Like he thought that Vasile was not my last name, but it was literally it was the seal. Like it was like a like, mob. Hey, name. everybody! Oh, I thought like, you were talking about like a morning no, sh- no, no, shock like, jock oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, that's Joey the Seal over there. Like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch out sure for like, Joey the Seal. Yeah. You end up swimming with the seals if you mess with Joe. Is that a de- swimming with the seals? Yeah, like yeah. it thought they all of a sudden seals made it into like the East River. Yeah, there's probably a seal in there somewhere, right? I don't know I would, enough about I, New York I City. I don't know if it's cold enough. Like, don't seals typically? Aren't they more cold weather? I, I have no idea. I don't know anything about seals. You know, All I right, sh- next show. I should know more than I do. <laughs> Why should you know more? My aunt uh, works for the San Diego Zoo doing like sea lion and seal shows. She buys and sells seals? No, she she like she, she buy she, she sells <laughs> seal shells <laughs> by the sea show. No. She's got like so at the San Diego Zoo. Yeah. They've got similar to like what you would find at like SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. They have like a show they yeah, put yeah. on. And she cool. puts on those shows. So she like trains I think it's mostly sea lions that she works with, but mm-hmm. she trains them to do tricks. She like interacts with the crowd with like yeah. one of those little headset mics and oh, is like cool. All right, now mm-hmm. Becky loves fish. Let's see if we'll get her to bark for a fish. Arf, arf, arf. Oh, here you go, <laughs> Becky. You know, now, she does like those shows. What what is the difference between a seal and a sea lion? I think one is a lot bigger. Is that the only difference? Do you not have you never seen a sea lion and a seal? A I, seal is like I've seen them, but I don't I like yeah. I couldn't tell you what the like I can tell you what the difference between a tiger and a lion. Is. I would say that like a seal, this is going off purely off memory. Mm-hmm. A seal is closer to like an otter in shape, like mm-hmm. they're just like a big tubular animal. And they swim like that. A sea lion has like the flippers, yeah, and almost walks around like they're on feet, you know, like mm-hmm. it's like it's on all four. It's got like a flipper back, and it's like up, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. Okay. Versus a sea a seal, which is kind of more like a little floating missile going around. It's got like more fins or like only. Okay. I don't know. It is, so it's in it's, the comment yeah. section if you know the difference between a <laughs> seal and a sea lion. Please go ahead and share. Uh, Christy Neubauer, if you are listening, or Christy Dovich, feel free to comment the actual differences because you know way better than I do. Um, but <laughs> this is Renegades Weekly. It's a baseball podcast about <laughs> baseball. As you can tell. About the Hudson Valley Renegades, the high A affiliate of the New York Yankees. Again, I am Zach, and this is Joe, the seal, the seal. I always thought the, 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 the seal would sound more like a morning radio guy. Or it's like, hey, we've got Joe and the Seal here to talk about, pfft, you know, whatever. Actually, that's probably what we'd be talking about. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of fart noises. So, okay, so let's talk about the big story in baseball right now. To mm-hmm. hard segue off of the yeah. Seal talk, let's talk about the MLB lockout as it pertains to the Hudson Valley Renegades. Mm-hmm. So there, I know there's a lot of conversation going on about yep. the lockout. There's a lot of. You know, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and brr, brr, brr about the lockout, but mm-hmm. it's very good. We, yeah. yeah, thank you. We keep seeing people on social media, different teams, you know, putting out how the lockout is going to affect them. And I feel like this is the best way for us to come out and have a conversation about how the lockout is affecting us. So, Joe, based on everything you've heard, you've been in some high level conversations, you got a lot of ins, a lot of outs. How is the MLB lockout going to affect the Hudson Valley Renegades? Well, I was just talking to my friend Rob. Um, ah. He's kind of a big wig up in, uh, up in New York. Oh my. No, no. Uh, I, I was not talking with uh, with Rob Manfred. But yeah. no, the, the important thing to know, obviously, is that the MLB lockout does not affect us here in the minor leagues. It doesn't affect the Hudson Valley Renegades this year. We're going to start on time. Our first games are going to be on the road this year mm-hmm. down south in, in South Carolina and Georgia. And then we'll come back home April 19th. 
Uh, yeah, it's more y'all it's down not there. Yeehaw, Yeehaw's, Yeehaw's more, more like west. Texas. Yeah. yeah, that's more west. Um, come home April nineteenth. Have our home opener as scheduled. And I mean, obviously, the thing is, is you know, for us from a business standpoint, from a baseball standpoint, we're we're thrilled to have a full season that's not going to be affected by the lockout. But of of course, we're rooting for the players' association and the clubs to kind of come together, get to an agreement. It seems like. The news in just the past 24 hours as we're sitting here recording looks like a full 162 game schedule is now back on the table after it wasn't at the MLB level. Yeah, for, let's do it for a little bit. So hopefully we're able to kind of close the gap there, get an agreement together and, and have a full major league season as well. But at least as it pertains to the Renegades and high East baseball this year, uh, we're going to we're going to move on as scheduled. The, the only difference is we wouldn't have any 40 man roster guys on the team this year but at this level you'd maybe see one throughout the year if you saw one that would be a lot it's it's not really typical here that's something that you would more see uh maybe affect the triple a roster the double a rosters in scranton wilkesbury and somerset yeah i think you know just to, to give a little bit of context too as to our relationship with the 40-man roster we did not have a single person who played for us last year who was on the 40-man roster mm -hmm. at the time that they were with the Hudson Valley Renegades. I think now, guys who played for us last year, and I don't think we're allowed to say names, <laughs> but uh, there were there are probably now five guys, six guys who played for us who are mm -hmm. now on a 40-man roster of either the New York Yankees or another team. Yep. So even if, even if like we were, we're, we're not going to be swimming in guys that are relevant to this lockout mm -hmm. period yeah so usually you see them right before they go on to be mm -hmm. relevant to this lockout yeah you there, know what i mean there was one guy with tampa last year who was on the 40-man roster um that would be a player that was kind of targeted to come here to hudson valley at mm -hmm. some point this year whether it would have been to start because he was coming off of an injury so they might not have put him right here but at some point this year you were kind of looking at this guy as a pitcher coming here but um obviously with the lockout on that, that would affect things. But again, it you even look at that as it might not even affect anything in terms of the opening day roster because yeah. he might not have been here to start anyway. Right, and and I mean, who knows? Maybe they will get the lockout stuff all resolved, and Major League Baseball will mm -hmm. be back. And that's uh, the hope. And yeah. if they did that, they would still predate our home opener. So even if there was a forty man guy who might have been here, mm -hmm. he might still be here by opening day. Uh, yep. But. As far as we can tell, things are cooking down in, in Tampa right now. The guys yep. who are able to practice are practicing with, you know, the mystery coaching staff that we, <laughs> we still <laughs> don't know. <laughs> but I'm assuming that somebody in that, in that facility be there, right? is probably yeah. there. We'll also be up here in the Hudson Valley. We hope to be announcing who that will be and have a conversation with whoever our coaching staff is going to be once the Yankees are comfortable announcing that information. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but, yeah, that's – that's every way that the lockout is affecting us right now. The only real way that it feels like it's affecting us is that we feel compelled to continually be talking about that it's not affecting us. Yeah, right. And that's that's obviously important. You know, I'll I'll go out and people will know me from being with the Renegades or or just from being in baseball and get the question. So, how does this lockout affect you? And it's like, all right, I know for us, we're we're in it, we're seeing it all the time. But yeah, you know. Not everyone sees it, and, and it's important to, to continue to just get the message out that, yes, the lockout is not affecting our season, and, and we get to go on as normal. And, you know, you mentioned the, the camp going on right now in, uh, down in Tampa was just reading something from Brian Hoke, who covers the Yankees for MLB.com, about Trey Sweeney, the Yankees' uh, first-round draft pick last year, and the progress that he's making, and how... In the article, he was saying that, you know, he'll either start in Tampa and be at Hudson Valley at some point this year, possibly early on, depending on the progress he makes over the next couple of weeks. And, you know, it's it's a lot of fun just to see the coverage of these minor league guys that a lot of times those guys don't get covered during spring training because all of the focus is on the MLB team. Well, now the writers are writing about the minor league guys. So it's nice to see kind of the spotlight be on some of the players that are going to be here this year that you can, you know, go wherever and get to know these players a little bit more before our season starts well and i'll throw i'll throw in a, a hot take i think and, and this is not endorsed by anybody but i think the lockout might actually end up you see a lot of people out there having that sort of like oh it's ruining baseball they're trying to ruin baseball whatever 
I kind of have the opposite opinion because I don't think anybody's love for baseball starts at Yankee Stadium. I think it starts at places like Dutchess Stadium. I think it starts at the high school level, amateur baseball. I think that's where people fall in love with baseball is like being in sort of those smaller baseball environments on a warm summer night, watching the game up close, really feeling the atmosphere and that sort of thing. And that's where I think the lockout might actually end up benefiting baseball a little bit is if the only way to get your baseball fix is to kind of come to one of these smaller venues and get a get a, a, a an up close and personal approach that you maybe wouldn't have gotten at Yankee Stadium I think that's going to actually end up creating better warmer memories for people than like walking into a big monolith of a stadium and mm-hmm. and seeing the game from the 300 level you know where you're you're ducking airplanes as they fly overhead I think it's gonna. I think this could end up re-triggering some of the romantic feelings for baseball if people start making their way out to more minor league games. That might be a biased opinion, obviously, <laughs> but I, I was thinking about it the other day, and I was like, you know, it, it kind of feels like when I first kind of fell in love with baseball, it was like, you know, playing high, going to see high school games mm-hmm. at like our local field, or we had amateur baseball is really big in Minnesota, and like going to watch the Princeton Panthers take on the Quamba Cubs at a field where like the outfield fence is only half finished. So it's like a chain link fence until you get to dead center field. And then it's an orange snow fence that completes the, 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 the diamond, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a guy who wheeled up his like DJ equipment and set it up by the first base. And that's the PA system for the whole thing. And he's blasting thrash metal in our first baseman's (laughs) ear. Like that is the stuff that made me like love baseball from like a a macro level Mm -hmm. was just sort of that vibe. And I think people will start filtering to smaller baseball situations when the big guy, when they can't just as easily sit at home, throw on yes, and watch the Yankees. Yeah, and even on top of that, I, we know because we've we've been in in minor league baseball and and these levels for for a few years. But you know, at this level, it's always sold as more than just the game. It's the fan experience. It's the promotions. It's the theme nights. It's all that other stuff the the overall entertainment aspect of it and i almost wonder if like you said a lot of people in the area who maybe don't live right around the corner from Dutchess stadium but are a little bit further out who maybe would have come to one game two games because of this lockout not only Dutchess stadium but any other you know team around since they can't sit on and throw on a, a game to be able to come out and get that full experience that kind of goes beyond what you'd get going to Yankee Stadium, going to City Field, or, uh, you know, I don't want to say Fenway Park because that's a whole other thing yeah, unto yeah. itself, but, like, you know, any of these other major league parks, the that experience that you don't necessarily get at that level, um, you know, and you bring your kids and it becomes that um, that family outing and you realize, oh, yeah, we definitely need to come out to, to more yeah. of these and, and hopefully – it fuels that love of baseball because like for me i growing up outside of new york i went to games at yankee stadium growing up i went to games at shea stadium where the mets growing up and i went to newark bears games um who were an old independent team that played in newark new jersey and i remember when we were at bears games getting to see jose canseco but like close up we were five rows off the field we'd be at yankee stadium or city field we'd be up in the fourth deck you know hundreds of feet up above and those were great memories too but getting that up close and personal experience that you get at a ballpark like this or really anywhere that isn't an MLB ballpark um, was just a a thing that for me as a a baseball obsessed kid I just absolutely loved yeah we we had a lot of that when I was with the St. Paul Saints too because you know we had what Kevin Millar came back and took an at bat you know (laughs) like uh, three years ago and hit a homer, and it was one of the coolest experiences. But you're, like, up close. There's not a bad seat in the house at yeah. the minor league level. You're, like, right up on top of these guys while, mm-hmm. they're, while they're doing their doing their thing. Uh, Rafael Palmero came through playing with the uh, the Texas Air Hogs. That's right, and, yeah. And got a chance to, like, see – I think his kid was playing on the team, and it was, like, a father-son thing. You know, way back in the day, the Saints had Daryl Strawberry come through and play, mm-hmm. and you got to see him up close. You know, and that's not just independent. Like, I'm thinking St. Yeah. Paul Saints because that's sure. my background. But, like – you know, walking out into Dutchess Stadium, like you're right on top of the action. Mm-hmm. 
the entire time. Right. So, and this is kind of, I guess, this is turning into one of our more sales pitchy episodes. But like, <laughs> the the vibe is just different at yep. this level than it is at the big league level. And like, I think there's like a, rom- it's more romantic, mm-hmm. I think, than going to some of the bigger monolith ballparks. Like, you, it's, think of it more in football, but like going to like the big house, yeah, you, you know, and being a part of that atmosphere for college football, and then going to like. SoFi Stadium, where the thing is like so built to be like this crazy state of the art thing. It's really cool, yeah, but it doesn't quite have that same vibe that like those old crumbling mm-hmm. places have. Yeah, and that's kind of the vibe that you're gonna get here. I mean, it's, it's bad. It's a brand new <laughs> stadium that just hosted the Super Bowl. <laughs> that's a, a hell of an atmosphere. Yeah, but you you get my point, right? Like this feels a little bit more, you know cohesive and part of the part of the it's just it's just a a more romantic environment and i think here's my here's my challenge to you folks every time that you want to post something negative about the lockout every time that go back to your twitter feed every time you did post something upset about the lockout ever go back count all those tweets and count all those thoughts and buy one six dollar ticket to a Renegades game for every one of those negative thoughts you had and really spin that thing around and come out and enjoy baseball the way it was meant to be seen (laughs) Gosh darn it. <laughs> that was brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you turned Thank that you. right into a sales department. I know, pitch. and I'm not even in the sales department. <laughs> I'm not getting commissioned for any of this. I no. just want to see butts in seats. I want to see people enjoying baseball, and mm-hmm. I think this is the place to do it. it I, I think you're you're definitely right. Like, I mean, you look at what it is now for the Yankees and in the minor leagues, it's everyone's talking about Anthony Volpe. Well, if he came to a Renegades game second half of last year, there was Anthony Volpe yeah. right there, 15 feet away from you. Like, there's so many pictures that I've seen of him signing autographs for fans, meeting with yep. with kids and stuff like that. And those are experiences that you can get here, you can get in Somerset, you can get in Scranton, you can get, you know, at any of these minor league parks. But you're not going to get that in Yankee Stadium because there's just so much more insulation. Yeah. Um, you know, once you get there and there's um, – kind of less opportunity to have those those intimate experiences with these guys and be able to say yeah I remember seeing that guy at Dutchess Stadium when he was when he was a member of the Renegades and now look at at kind of where he's gone and you just you never know who that next Anthony Volpe is going to be right Right. going into last year no one was really talking about him everyone was looking at other guys they were saying well he had kind of a disappointing year after he got drafted and then had the year off in 2020 then he came out and was just the hottest name in minor league baseball, and he came here to the Hudson Valley. I, I mean, and you never know who that next one is going to be, and that's part of the exciting part about it, being at the level that we're at in high A, this is really where you see a lot of those top guys break out and really make a name for themselves, and that's one of the really kind of special and exciting things about it is you can see guys who um, put it all together and – just develop and become those special kind of players that you'll remember watching for years to come. Well, and Volpe's a good example of like, and I'm not throwing out a comparing him to Derek Jeter, Mm -hmm. you know, because there's plenty of people out there doing all kinds of of conversating about that. But like, think about it. It, Let's say he is the next Jeter. You know, Mm -hmm. you can come out and see him from six feet away. Yeah. You know, he's going to come up, take a picture with your kid. He's going to sign an autograph for you. Like you, you have, you're, you're in like this such close proximity to people who could then go on to be you don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. once these guys leave these these walls and what's going to happen yeah. when they get to the big leagues you know but you could be you could be watching greatness at its like gestational period which mm-hmm. is really cool but even beyond just like the volpes like the number one on the call sheet yeah. type guys like i had so much fun watching guys like james nelson last year mm-hmm. where like he started off hot kind of struggled and then you saw him like kind of start figuring it back out you know as this as the year goes on yep seeing you know a guy like chad bell comes up and hits like an opposite field walk off homer mm-hmm. when john boy media is here yeah, yeah and gets like featured on that like <laughs> little bit but like it's just kind of like seeing a guy like ken waldachuk yeah i don't even know if i can say his name i'm pretty sure i can yeah uh, you can yeah, yeah he's yeah. not a foreign name. okay uh but you know, a guy that kind of was unheard of in the yep. Yankees organization and then showed up here and did not allow a run for his entire tenure with the Hudson Valley Renegades mm-hmm. and just, like, was lights out. Guys yep. who come out of nowhere and just create really cool 
experiences. And I don't want to make it sound like we're dunking on Yankee Stadium, by the way. That is a fantastic yeah. baseball viewing experience. But for a lot of different reasons mm -hmm. than you're going to get here. And I think a real passionate love of baseball really starts at places like the Dutch and places like, you know, a high school field out in the middle of a cornfield or mm -hmm. something like that, like places you wouldn't expect it to be. You know, that's that's where I think a real love of baseball starts. So uh, and we don't need to belabor all of this. I feel like sure. we've, we've really started romanticizing being here. Well, at least we it did, almost sounds like we're vilifying going we to did, the big city. But <laughs> at least we did more time on this than on seals. <laughs> yeah, fair. Well, we can we can pick that back up. We can. We can. Yeah. yeah my daughter loves seals. Like, really? We went to the aquarium in uh, in where, where's the it's in Connecticut. I, I always get Mystic? lost. It's 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 either Norwalk, Norwich or Greenwich. <laughs> it's one of the itches or the nors. I think it's Norwalk. There's a right on the right on the sound there. OK, I don't know. There's, I, I there's don't, a, I don't a, know. Either. There's an aquarium and I, I know the one in Mystic seals but that's way over flying there. around in the water and she loved yeah. it. Oh, that's speaking great. of daughters, I did mentees in the thing that we were going to. I see Nancy commented that it's Norwalk. Thank you, mm -hmm. Nancy. That is helpful. It um, is. We we had a little contest out on social media. We did pertaining to the birth of my latest child and hopefully <laughs> final <laughs> can i say that is that mean to say i hope I, it's the last one if you uh, if you have a third don't show him or her this video yeah, yeah, that's yeah, for yeah, sure yeah. no this is going on the internet nobody's ever gonna see this uh but so we did have a contest if you guessed the name of my daughter you got to win renegades tickets mm -hmm. right did anyone guess the name nobody did and it's I feel not, like that's a setup, though. And it's not like an outlandish name. I feel like that could be a setup, though, right? How? You, you got all these names, and they're like, well, I'm not going to pick any of those. I want people here in this ballpark. We just soliloquied for like <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> we, we just rapped poetically about how beautiful it is and you should come here. I want to give sure. people tickets. But nobody guessed the name. The name is Harriet Marie. Hmm. Harriet. 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 There was a lot of like... Olivia and Oliver, a ton of people guessing Zach Jr. What about Rascoon? Rascoon did that? not make it. That is still one of my favorite things. <laughs> That's a, a bit of an inside joke for y'all, but we've we've been uh, – see, I'm already ready for the Southern Series. Uh, it's perfect. Yeah, we were kicking around the idea of making a villain for the ballpark, and we'd name him Rascoon, and he'd be like a French painter raccoon <laughs> who has this really weird vendetta for Rascal. I still think we should do it. Uh, you know, and then like throughout the night, like Rascal, whenever he tries to do something, Rascoon is there to try to foil it. You know, like they're playing musical chairs and then Rascoon keeps coming out and bringing chairs for other people while Rascal's trying to win the game. I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but no, we did not, we did not bet the name of our child <laughs> on Renegades tickets. <laughs> like, we weren't gonna, like, oh, well, somebody guessed, you know, uh, Zach Jr. So we can't name the kid that because mm -hmm. then I've got to shell out two tickets to a Hudson Valley <laughs> Renegades game in April and May. Yeah. So uh, no, we did not. Nobody guessed it. I, I have to go back, I guess, and look, and I can check the timestamp. So it's a, if it's after this, then sorry, folks. But nobody guessed it, as far as I can tell. So nobody wins the tickets. So we'll should we figure out a way to like just give somebody random tickets on the air here? What's a good reason? What's a good thing they can comment? We're already going to give away two people or two tickets to someone who comments at random, but what's another way that people can win tickets? Another way that people can win yeah. tickets. Putting That's you on a the spot question. a little bit. Wow. Um I feel like That's a really tough question. Um I would I I'm would, here to challenge you, Joe. <laughs> I I <laughs> I can think of a couple of ones, but they might get us in trouble. Oh, uh, let's do with, it. With my friend Rob. Oh, uh, got it. Never mind. But, <laughs> so let's not do Can't that. Can't upset Rob. Um, but uh, while I brainstorm this, I do want to say that uh, thank you to anyone who we saw out at the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade this past Saturday. Ah, fun. In the, uh, in the village of Wappingers going down. We're going to be at the, uh, the Beacon Parade this Saturday as well. So if you didn't uh, check us out there. Head on down to the Beacon St. Patrick's Day Parade this Saturday. Yep. Renegades are going to be there giving out schedules. Uh, buy one, get one tickets. Buy one, get one free tickets. Yeah, throwing uh, we're passing hats out as, as well. Best throwing as hats as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, people were going crazy for those hats. It oh, was, I bet. It was wild. People love a free hat. And it's it's a good looking hat yeah. too. I wish I had one here to show. It, I've seen that would have like, been smart yeah, if I had. It wasn't a hat. one of these. No, but, it was not one of these hats. But 
These are available at the team store right now. Mm-hmm. Renegades.milb.store. No, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, no. Visit the Renegades team store. You can figure out how to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. HVRenegades.com. Uh, there's no, 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 there's no, no, a link there. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, websites. Uh, it's, I, I do a lot of websites. This sales pitchy. You know, it, it, it feels is. like we're very in sales. It is, moment. but it's only because I'm stalling yeah. to try to figure out show up, how we're going to give the away beacon parade. Tickets. Bring something green or the exact opposite color of green. What, what is time? The what color? time is the beacon parade? Uh, that is a great question. I saw noon on an email, but I don't know if that's an internal email or an external email. I think that's when we have to line up. Yeah. Okay. Um, Google. Go to Google.com, mm-hmm. and then there's going to be a little search bar, and put in. Beacon, New York, St. Patrick's Day Parade. March 12th. March 12th. Smiley face, and that should get you positive results. <laughs> As opposed to frowny face, which yeah. gets you negative results. I would assume if we're lining up at noon, it's probably going to be at 1. Mm-hmm. But don't quote me on that because I, I, I've i never organized a parade, so I don't know how that works. I've never organized a parade either. But Isn't that weird that we're going to like live our entire lives probably? Without ever having organized a parade. Uh, that is I, one thing you and I will likely never do. I don't think that's weird. I would prefer, quite frankly, to go my entire life without organizing but a parade. Think about how many people in the world have organized parades of all kinds of different shapes and colors, and you and I have never done it, nor will we likely ever do it. It's true. It's. I feel like that's an experience. You know what? Okay. I'm going to put this out right now. Yeah, hit me. If and when mm-hmm. the Renegades win the 2022 High East Championship, okay. you and I will plan the parade down 90. Oh my god, we're all going to die. <laughs> to celebrate <laughs> the championship. We, the only way we survive Do not that, hold me to that. The only way I don't we think survive we can get that is if is if we do it when it's like locking like backed up traffic. Mm-hmm. Because people fly down that road with reckless abandon. Can yeah. I tell you? Okay, so well, one of, well we can get permits to get it blocked off. Can I tell you a great parade story? Yeah. Uh it's it's from my time with the St. Saint Paul Saints, okay. right? We in one the 2020, uh, 2019 uh, American Association Championship, mm-hmm. and our broadcaster decided it would be funny to put out that we were going to have a championship parade, and it was going to be the shortest parade in championship history. And so the parade was one block outside the ballpark, <laughs> and we went from you know one street <laughs> to the next street up. Mm-hmm. In parade fashion, and we got like news coverage for it. We did you know the what? shortest We've... parade. It was a one block parade. We've got Shout this out to road. Sean Aronson for coming up with the idea while all of us were sleeping off the championship fumes <laughs> from the night before. So we've got this road here, right by right by the parking lot. You just parade right down that eighty four into the parking lot. No, no, no. When you oh, turn that, in by oh, the marquee, that one. yeah, right yeah. At the front, yeah, yeah, with the traffic light. Very cool. We just parade right down we just there. Just go. That's go, our go right there. Yeah, yeah that's our. We could do our own short one. <laughs> that's our championship yep. parade. But All right, we'll plan you, it. Did you come up with a way that people can win tickets? <sighs> Is there a baby related way that people like? Does it have to be baby related now? I don't know. I'm just saying it was baby related initially. I mean, I'm going to put this out as a way to win free tickets. I have found today the existence of a Renegades theme song. Oh yeah, you told me. You just mentioned that. And if if anyone can get me a copy of this song. So not we're not talking like you know the lyrics and you're sending us text. Like I want you the have music. to send I an, want the MP3 either an file. audio file or if it's on YouTube somewhere. And here's the thing, the person who's probably gonna win this is like Steve Gleiner, who just probably has it. Sure. But or Zoles has it like on a cassette mm. buried somewhere. Well, in you deep. know what? That would but be fantastic if either of them had it. Either I'm, way, I am willing to buy a cassette player and rig it up to record it digitally mm-hmm. and we can play this thing before games. Can you just give us a taste of the lyrics? Okay, so the song is called Renegades Fever. Renegades Fever. This would not have gone over super well. Uh, early 2020, probably. No, uh, it's from 1999, though. Okay. Uh, Dusty Callow. All is, right. Uh, the Dusty, one if you're a fan, words and music. I, I believe she is a fan. I mean, she wrote a whole song. I mean, it was 23 years ago. Yeah. And a Google search reveals that she does still do something in this general area. All right. Um, cool. of the Hudson Valley. I mean, she's probably the person to start. She probably is. With this context. She probably so you are send watching. her an email. Dusty, yeah. if you're listening, two yeah. free tickets. Hey. Um, there's a fever burning in the Hudson Valley, and in the summer, that's when we all go to rally around our baseball men. They're the finest and the best. 
the Hudson Valley Renegades a cut above the rest. And there's a couple more lines in the verse. Yeah. There's a chorus, there's another verse, chorus again, and it kind of plays out. I really, really, really want to hear this song, and if we can use it, I want us to, and it has to exist somewhere. Because right now, like, there are so many different types of tunes that are going through my head. Mm -hmm. Trying to think of, like, 1999, you know, is it kind of like a Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera type pop jam? Mm -hmm. Is it kind of more of, like, an Alanis Morissette, uh, you know, you ought to know type vibe? Like, what are we, what are we talking here? I got no concept for it. Is it like, you know, sort of like later dregs of grunge so, sort of got a little bit of that vibe to it, like some heavy guitar and and what? Like, what is it? I just want to know what it is. So here's what here's what the description is before the lyrics. In, oh, got it. So this it's is, got a tune description. This is, this is out of an old uh, Hudson Valley Renegades program. Yeah, from, you've been I going through those as like prep yeah. stuff. Yeah. So the song Renegades Fever evolved from a radio commercial. Uh, Dusty and her husband were driving through Connecticut when a theme song for the New Britain Rock Cats, the former Double A affiliate of the Twins, sure. um, came over the radio, and it was like, if you've ever heard it, it's it's a it's Do a you decent it? song. I I've heard it. I can't sing it right now because I don't I don't know. Can't it. or won't. I don't know it well enough to to hum go. a few bars. I don't know. I can sing you the New Britain Bees. Uh, theme song, is which it, was an independent team that replaced them, it's similar, but it's not. Okay. It's not the same exact thing. But the Rock Cats had a song. The Hartford Yard Goats have a song. Um, but anyway, so that inspired them to write a song for the Renegades, uh, and it took about forty-five minutes to write, and it features because the fact that the word a, fevers in it, it also yeah. makes me think it's like, you know, that sort of like old jazz standard. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a fever. Yeah. <laughs> When you kiss me, fever when you hold me tight. I'm trying to sing a little to get a little yeah, yeah, goodwill no, I know, towards I know, you singing towards I know, me. I know the song. Fever! <laughs> In oh, the morning, fever all through the night. But yeah, no, this song features electric guitar, bass guitar, saxophone. There's a lot of sax oh, in this, this song. Is like some, this is going to be like Joe Satriani-esque. Oh, yeah. like, Drums and keyboards. Three people that. singing backing vocals. And uh, Dusty is this on lead very and fun. harmony vocals. I like I said, like I'm, I really earnestly want to hear this song. If we can find this, if song, you can track we can, it down, we can work it into our game presentation. Yeah. in some way. I'm so, sure Joel's will be on board for that. So that is why. Uh, that's my idea to give away tickets. If you can track that song down, and send the audio file to jvasile at hvrenegades.com. Um, I. That's my idea to give away tickets. I'll I'll do that regardless of whatever other idea we're able to brainstorm. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, that I would love to put that out there right now on uh, on this here show. That is fantastic. Uh, Kaylee Sheftick, is there any other way to win free tickets? Kaylee, every Tuesday, including today, uh, we're going to be putting out on social some thing that you have to do on social media. In order to win free tickets, we're calling it Free Ticket Tuesday. A very clever name that I what, came and, up with. And what is today? Uh, today is Tuesday. No, no, I mean, what is today's? What What do you have to do today? Oh, today's is a is a little bit more uh, uh, run of the mill. Okay. What so, like got? for instance, uh, l- I think it was maybe last week. It was what is the most you would do for beads at Mardi Gras because of Mardi Gras. Right. That was the that was the free ticket. The one prior to that was like, what's your favorite thing about your socks? Mm-hmm. You know, we're trying to keep them one. fun. Yep. I remember uh, what uh, fictional character would you have to be the manager? Yeah, we talked about that one too. So the uh, so for, for this one, all you have to do is tag three people that you want to come to a game with. Could it be any three people? Like I could any tag- Any three people on social media. You could tag I could tag three Justin people, Bieber, yep, exactly. Selena Gomez, and I just want them to- to reconcile and get back together. I didn't even know they were um, dating ever. Oh, years ago. This is a uh, this is an you know we'll we'll talk about. I it thought off the Justin air. Bieber was dating Taylor Swift. And you know what? Taylor Swift can be the third. Okay. Uh, we'll make it to a like, du- we'll make it a double her own the date. <laughs> no, I was gonna say we'll make it a double date. Uh, <laughs> and she just goes alone. No, she's there with me. Oh, uh, okay. Come on, Zach. All right. Come on. Right. Come on. Okay, no. so so th- those would be my three. Tag but, three like, people, and if you and if you tag three people, mm-hmm. we're gonna pick one person who tagged three people at random on each of the platforms, mm-hmm. and on so on Twitter, 
Facebook and Instagram are the ones we're running it on. So we're giving away three sets of tickets. Three sets one of on tickets. Each platform. Okay. And for this particular one, since you're tagging three people, we're going to give you four tickets. You can actually make good on your on your promise. You can bring four people to a Renegades game for free on us. It'll be an April and May game. We've never played baseball this early, and we just really want to make sure that we've got people in the stands to really, you know, get get in that vibe. You know, I've heard New Yorkers aren't the hardiest of folks, so like getting you guys to come out in relatively chilly weather, it sounds like is going to be a challenge. But I'm on board for it. <laughs> you folks, yeah. Like I haven't just moved here and <laughs> yeah. committed my life to this. State. I was gonna say you you live here now. I do. Your driver's license, I'm assuming, is from New York. It is not. I need to get on that. You probably <laughs> should get on that. Minnesota. This. My license plates still say Minnesota. I got to figure that out. I mean that that's also half the cars in the parking Dude, lot. You know what? So brief sidebar. Mm-hmm. It feels really complicated to get your stuff switched over into New York stuff. Like. I wouldn't know. Mine we have to. I have to go get an inspection done on the car, I guess, in order to get New York plates. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea how to even begin to get that done. Well, you go to Google.com. Okay. Uh, New York State Inspection, and then I don't know if I don't know if that's New just York... going to bring up like Granite Inspection Group, a proud new partner of that's the right. Hudson Valley Renegades. That was the end. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That's okay, what I was like, sure, there was more. That's what you're going to get. Um, I I don't know if New York is a state like my home state of New Jersey where there's like inspection stations where you drive your car to or if it's like Pennsylvania where I just came from where it's like oh yeah you go to a gas station and you slip a guy $30 and then he'll look at your car for two seconds and go yeah it looks good to me I don't know why he's from we, Chicago we but, didn't even have that we, yeah. like in Minnesota it was like you got a, a notice in the mail mm-hmm. and then you were like alright cool uh, I am now a resident of Minnesota give me my give me my plates please oh, yeah oh i just meant in terms of the inspection but yeah i guess the plates too no inspection required i don't know i've never done any you don't have to get your cars inspected every couple of years in minnesota you pay your tabs you're good to go i I'm, I'm i'm that's i can't believe that that's true are you sure that you haven't been driving with lapsed inspection i have on your car for years never had a car inspected for any reason so you don't have you don't get For you don't get like reason. a you don't get like a sticker on your windshield that says this needs to be inspected by this month and this year. The only sticker I got is oil change. Okay, uh, we have like six people in this office from Minnesota. If anyone in this office from Minnesota is watching, I bet almost please none come of in you, here. I bet almost none of you have gotten your plates, with the exception of those of you who have lived here longer than I have. I think Tyson got new plates. Sure, but I mean like. I'm just trying to I'm trying to wrap my mind around you guys don't have vehicle inspection in Minnesota. I, I can't I can't imagine that. They're probably like you're used to driving yeah. in all kinds of conditions. You know what your car needs and doesn't need. Well, no, like, for instance, like in, in New Jersey, they'll take it through and they'll run it through like an emissions check to make sure that something's not going on there where you're polluting too much or like. They'll come in and make sure that everything's going safely so that it could still drive in New Jersey. They change the rules around of what they look for and what they don't every once in a while. But you got to take it in every two years. I think it's four years after you buy it new, and then it's every two years from there that you have to go and get All I inspected. can tell you is I have never in my life had a vehicle inspected. Now, at least to my like, knowledge. So, like, if I brought it in for write, an oil They'll change, write you a ticket and... Well, they won't tow your car, but they'll write you a ticket for it. Huh. I mean, if you're a police officer and you're watching, uh, bear with me. I've only been here for like almost a year now, but I'm working on it. I, I just know. don't, e- I honestly, I just don't even know where to start. Cause like, it's Cal, okay. so Cal tried to take it in and this is way off topic. This is why we need baseball Yeah, to get, we, we need a coaching staff, yeah, we need yeah. players, we need something. Uh, yeah. yeah, we need something actual to talk about, but. Like, she went to go, she got her New York license, but couldn't do the cars because she didn't have an inspection and couldn't do the inspection until we got New York insurance and couldn't do New York insurance until we did the plates. And it was like, every everybody was telling us all sorts of things. We now have insurance in New York, so we have that. Mm-hmm. But we have not, we, we are not, re- the vehicles are not registered in New York. Yep. We don't know how to get an inspection. Like we just and and with having a kid in there, like things just keep falling by yeah. the wayside. No, it's all right. I've got. So we're working on it. I've got my car. Coppers. It's got Jersey plates. It's got insurance in Pennsylvania where it's registered. My driver's license is Pennsylvania, but now I live in New York. 
Um, and hopefully my insurance company isn't hearing me say this and, uh, cause Pennsylvania has really good rates yeah, on uh, the go. car insurance, yeah. but better than New York. Um, personal, yeah, your personal stuff. moving grievance. Just I didn't end up giving away let's because do you it. refused good saying. What are her first words going to be? It's like I said, so we're like, talking, we're talking more yeah, of a long term yeah. thing. Okay. I like but, this. But I think maybe like, instead you don't of, have to be correct. Yeah. Just come up with whatever the most creative yeah. and yet realistic thing. Like you don't want to say like, oh, our first words are going to be the declaration of independence. Like it it's might probably be. not going to. We're very close to where it was signed. I think. Where was it signed again? Philadelphia? Philadelphia. We're that's like, close, right? I don't have no like, idea where anything is out of here. We're like three and a half hours from Philly. Yeah, so that's reasonable. That's a drive. We could take her there and she could just like start reading it. Yeah. You know, she's probably pretty smart. I'm pretty smart. <laughs> Between the two of you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd be able to figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, I like that. So, okay. So in the comments section, pitch first words for my newborn daughter, Harriet Marie, and... Uh, I'll pick my favorite, my personal favorite. It is up to my taste. Mm -hmm. Throw it in the comment section if I think it's funny. Uh, funny is what's going to win the day, folks. So go for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I think it's funny, uh, uh, you'll you'll win you'll win two tickets mm -hmm. to a game for April and May. Do you remember what? You, I mean, you don't remember my but first were, words. Were you ever told? Yeah, what turpentine. Your first words <laughs> no, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm assuming it's mama or dada. Yeah, yeah. But I like to think it was like. You know, <laughs> turpentine. Turpentine. <laughs> Do not comment turpentine. Yeah, it's, it's already taken. Like I was working on some wood, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. you know, this needs a little turpentine. turpentine. I don't even know what turpentine does. It's just a I fun word. Does it? It's kind of like a porcupine. Like if I had a pre pet porcupine, I'd name it turpentine. Turpentine the porcupine. Turpentine the porcupine. That could be the villain. Yes. Scrap rascoon. We, we get so turpentine no, the rascoon. Stays. I know where we can. I know where we can get a porcupine mascot. I'm just saying. That's that's all. I'm I saying. would love a legion of villains at Dutch Stadium. It'd be good and for and villains. Is constantly like. having to try to, mm -hmm. you know, match wits with all these different villains. Like he's Spider Man, and these are all the different Spider Man villains, which I couldn't name. But that's a that'd be a good Defenders of the Diamond Knight. Yeah, it would be. You know, um, Spider Man villains. There was well, there was Doc Ock. There was uh, yep. There was the Green Goblin, and there the was Green the Goblin. Sand Thing. The Sand Thing. I, is that the actual name of it? I don't think it's the name. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. So it might either. be Sandman, but that feels like the it's Sandman. Bad. I believe that was a wrestler from the nineties. Um, I don't know. Comment a villain. Just the, comment. The, the Joker was a Batman one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of villains up on the board over there. That's we true. Try to do something fun, and we were it's true. At right over there. Villain names. Venom. Yep. I think that's the the one that looks like Spider Man, except the. The outfit's so all black, right? It's like right? symbiote situation. Symbiote? Symbiote. If you know, you know. I don't know what that uh, is, yeah. Yeah, I don't know much, but I know that. Uh, <laughs> all right, anything else that we want to touch on? Any other things that are important to talk about besides progeny and car insurance and that sort of thing? <laughs> I, think, I think for the most part, we uh, we hit on everything. You know, our season's, season's going on as scheduled. I mean, we are Friday is four weeks from opening day. Yeah, of this season. We're opening on the road, but that doesn't yeah. change it. Like April 19th is when you folks that are watching need to really pay attention. Mm -hmm. Or you can uh, listen to Joe uh, on – have we announced the radio partner yet? We have not announced it yet. Okay, well, I'm not going to announce it now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not my place. Yeah. Uh, but we will be on the radio, so you guys can check mm -hmm. that out, road games and home games. Um, yeah, so start following the Renegades. We'll try to start putting out stuff – once we get a little bit closer to road opening day, and mm -hmm. then all of it builds to opening opening day, April 19th, right here at the Dutch. Let's fill the ballpark in April. It's never been done before here mm -hmm. in the history of the Hudson Valley Renegades. Bring your butt to the ballpark. Let's have ourselves some fun. Have a good time. Having a ball. There's a shooting star flying through the sky like an almond. We're going to crack it into some... Da, da, da. I don't know. Was that an actual song you were no. just singing, or were you making that up? It's another inside joke, Joe. All right, I'm, I'm on it's, the outside it's of from, that one. We did, a, we did a parody song in St. Paul for... Uh, what is it? It's a Queen song. Well, don't stop me now. Okay. We're having such yeah, a yeah. good time. And there was an inside joke amongst the people on the video team that we would like... See, again, not really for anybody, but, like, yeah. 
we were we we were trying to come up with lyrics for the song and so we were constantly going like you know there's a pita pocket laying in the sun with some cockroaches eating at the sides of the ends and like trying to come up with different things to say there you so, minnesota people are uh we have a good time man different yeah <laughs> yeah in in a good way sure anything else joe <laughs> no, that we want to talk like, about so cool explain that all right, Renegades Weekly, like and subscribe or whatever on the podcasting stuffs and visit the Renegades website and follow us on social media and follow our TikTok and our YouTube and our Snapchat and our Twitters and our Instagrams and our Facebook. And I'm petering out already saying all these different things. I think, I think that, that covers all of them. Yeah. You got the TikTok, right? I did get the TikTok. Yeah. Get tickets to Renegades games in general, uh, but specifically buy tickets to the mm-hmm. cool-sounding ones. And then uh, <laughs> they're come all on cool out. sounding. They are all what cool are sounding. Come on out, have a good time, have a ball. For Joe the Seal slash Joe the Seal, mm-hmm. I'm Zach, the farmer, Neubauer. Neubauer means new farmer in German. Huh. Uh, this is 